Hi everybody, in today's video I am showing you my perfect but easy flaky pie crust coming right up. I will be releasing my full apple pie video later on, but for now this is part one, the pie crust. Hi everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. I am Amy from Neurotic Mom Bakes, and today I'm showing you my perfect but easy delicious pie crust. This is flaky, it's buttery, it's, it's so good for so many different pies, fruit pies, pumpkin pie, lots of different kinds of pies. So I'm gonna walk you through the whole process step by step because pie crust can be a little bit intimidating, but I promise it's easier than you think. So let's get started. The very first thing you need to do is you need cold ingredients. So I haven't pulled my milk or my butter out yet because um, you want them as cold as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out one third of a cup of cold milk. And then to that, I'm going to add one tablespoon of white vinegar. And I'm gonna set that aside. What I'm essentially doing is I'm making buttermilk. Uh, this is a great substitute for buttermilk if you don't have it, but I'm gonna let that sit and just kind of do its thing for a minute. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out two cups of all-purpose flour. Kind of fluff your flour a little bit before spooning it into the cup. That's the proper way. Next, I'm going to get out uh, one cup of unsalted butter or two sticks of butter cold as possible and I'm going to unwrap them and then cut them into small cubes. Sprinkle that onto my flour, kind of break them apart. The more they're broken up, the easier it will be for the next step. Okay, that's done. Now, this is the, this is the time consuming, little bit tricky part, but what you're going to do is we need to incorporate this butter into the flour until it forms little kind of pea-sized crumbs. You can do that with a pastry cutter, you can do it with a fork, but I find it's actually easiest to just, with perfectly nice clean hands, to just go in with my hands and do this. Oh, I forgot, one teaspoon of salt. Don't forget that. We're just trying to cut the butter into the flour. I did wash my hands before we started this video and I'm just gonna get in there and grab the pieces of butter and just kind of try to break them up with the flour. This is a good workout for your arms, by the way. And don't be discouraged if you feel like you're not making any progress. It feels like that for a long time, a few minutes, and then all of a sudden it just it comes together and you see that it's the right consistency. First, I'm just mostly breaking up, kind of smashing together the pieces between my fingers. I'm on tiptoes because it's kind of, I get more leverage that way. So if you're tall, if you're taller than I am, it'll be a little easier. And some people find a pastry cutter works great if you want to do that. I don't know if you have watched The Great British Baking Show. Here in the US, they call it The Great British Baking Show, but in, in uh, Britain, they call it The Great British Bake Off. I don't know why there's a difference, but anyway, it's my favorite show in the whole world, and they make a lot of pastry, and I just, I always see, I've, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen them use a pastry cutter on that show. It's just, pie crust, you just go in with your hands. That's just, I think the best way to, to do it. I see them kind of rub it together between their hands too. And I kind of wish they would do, I know they had the great American British baking show that was similar, but I don't, I don't know why it didn't last here, but I would, I would totally go on that show, the great British baking show, because it's, I don't know, they let you practice, you know what you're doing ahead of time, the time constraints are a little bit more realistic. Um, there's no crazy twists. I just, they all look like they're best of friends. I would totally do that show. In fact, I looked it up, but you have to be a citizen. But see how it's just starting to 
kind of form more uniform crumbs here so it's not looking just only like chunks of butter and flour. Okay, starting to come together, starting to be the consistency I want. We're so close. Just a few bigger crumbs of, or bigger pieces of butter, but you can kind of see how it's forming little crumbs in there. And you can kind of, it'll kind of come together if you, if you squeeze it between your hands like that. That's about where we want it. Perfect. If you see any big chunks of butter, just go break those up. I'm actually not gonna wash my hands because you're gonna get right back in there again. Okay, next step is we're gonna add the milk. Move this. I'm going to add just, I'm not gonna add quite the entire thing because you don't wanna add too much liquid and you can always add a little bit more. So I'm gonna get most of that in there, but reserve maybe a teaspoon or so. And we're gonna get right back in there and we're gonna start pulling this dough together. Now there are certain keys you have to remember with this kind of butter flaky pie crust. Number one, you want the cold butter and the cold milk. And number two, you need to get to that right stage consistency before you add the milk. And number three, you do not want to overwork pie crust. It will become too tough. So just as it's barely pulling together, and you know what, it's plenty wet, I don't think I need any more milk in there. That is perfect. You wanna be able to handle it and roll it out, and I don't want it any more wet than that. So I'm just gonna get the excess off my fingers. I'm gonna wash my hands really well. I'll come back to this in just a second. Now, the next step you need to remember that you should not skip over is you need to let your pie crust rest for about 30 minutes in the refrigerator. So I'm going to pull out some plastic wrap. I'm gonna take my dough and kind of flatten it out a little bit. And that is going to go in the fridge. And while that is resting, I'm going to make my apple pie filling. Okay, this has been in my fridge for about 30 minutes and I am ready to roll it out. I will show you how to do that. Okay, you can do this a couple different ways. Um, I have my pie plate ready to go here. I'm just gonna give it a light spray. You can just divide this in half and it will make two bottom pie shells. Um, or you can divide it in half, roll it out, and one can be the bottom, and then you can put one on the top. I'm making an apple pie. I just happen to be making that. So I'm gonna divide it in half, and one will be the bottom, and then I'm just gonna do some, I'm gonna do some lattice, and that will be in another video. I'm going to do some lattice treatment on the top and some decorations. Really important, make sure you have lots and lots and lots of flour. You do not want this to stick. I learned that the hard way. I feel like I say that in my videos all the time. I learned it the hard way for you so that you don't make the same mistakes. So for my particular pie today, I'm going to, um, normally I would divide it exactly in half, but I want a little bit more for the top, just if you're doing some extra decorations. So I will divide it just slightly less than half. If you're not gonna use this for a while, wrap it back up in some plastic so it doesn't dry out. And again, you don't wanna overwork this. Flour, my rolling pin. And you're going to roll this out quite thin. And it's going to feel like it can't get any thinner, but it will. But you have to roll it large enough to fit not only just the bottom of your pie plate, but it has to go up the sides. You don't want a thick pie crust anyway, because then it won't cook all the way and you'll have the soggy, if you watch the Great British Baking Show, you'll have the soggy bottom, which is the ultimate mistake for Paul Hollywood. You cannot have a soggy crust. So you want it nice and thin. So about this point, I like to get my pie plate and make sure it fits, but I want about a half inch to an inch on the outside 
of this when I'm measuring it. So it needs to go even thinner. I told you, you think it can't get thinner, but it can. If your dough is cracking or breaking, just get a damp finger and just kind of paste it back together. This part's going to be the bottom of the pie plate. You will not see it, but it is cracking right here. Good, now is the tricky part. This is the hardest part of the whole thing. Hopefully this works, so make sure your rolling pin is completely clean, free of any, sometimes little dough pieces stick to it. Really floured, nice, nice and well, and then we're going to roll the pie crust on top of it and then transfer, I'm gonna move this out of the way so I'm 100% ready to go. Transfer it over to the pie plate. Okay, here we go, wish me luck. I actually like to get a cake scraper to just kind of lift it up over my rolling pin so it doesn't stick. I think we got it. Now we're gonna lift this carefully. Unroll it. Oh, I think we got it. Yay! Okay. I will say a rolling pin with handles is easier. But I think we did it. All right, now at this point, I am just gonna rip off a little piece. You'll see why, I'm just gonna form it into a ball. I like to use that little bit of pie crust to kind of press it in. Instead of using your fingers, you'll leave it kind of a fingerprint, but if you do it with this, it first of all, it doesn't stick, and then it doesn't leave any markings, and then no pie crust is perfect, right? There's gonna be little little cracks every once in a while. If you see cracks, go ahead and get just a little wet finger and kind of paste it together, but that is actually pretty good. Okay, now at this point, there's a couple different options. If you are going to put a, a full sheet of dough on top, don't trim the edges yet, because you'll want that ex excess dough to kind of crimp. If you are going to do a decorative top with your other piece of dough, then you can go ahead and trim so it's just on the outside of the pie plate. And then if you're going to just leave it open, you can just trim as, as you want or crimp however you want. Just there's lots of different methods, but because I'm doing a lattice top, I'm gonna go ahead and trim the outside of my pie. Okay, so that concludes my pie crust tutorial. Again, my recipe will yield two bottom shells or a bottom and a top shell, just depending on what you're baking. If you have any questions about this, and you might, because this is a little bit tricky, feel free to ask in the comments and I will come back and answer them. And if you would like to see more tutorials like this one, make sure you subscribe to my channel. We'll see you next time.